Just two days ago, OpenAI released a new AI called Deep Research, which could possibly do your job better than you're doing it. Stay tuned and let's find out how this new AI works and how we can use it to make more credible and intelligent analysis of how the world works. Stay tuned. My name is Nicholas Fernholm and welcome to my channel. I am a senior advisor and a public speaker when it comes to new technologies such as AI. And today we're going to be investigating a completely new AI called Deep Research, which is really their newest model O3, but with some new functionality. So what they've done here is basically making this AI into your private project manager or researcher, where it has a lot longer time to think through the process of answering your question. It also asks questions back before it starts making its research, and it can think up to about 20 to 30 minutes before giving you a response to your question. Now, this extra time of thinking allows it to actually read through a lot more sources and go through step by step different types of information sources on the internet. Now they've tested this AI through two different benchmarks. The first one is called Humanity's Last Exam, which sounds a lot more dramatic than it is. It's about 3000 questions which are quite specific within different types of domains. So it's everything from biology to chemistry to social sciences. The second benchmark is called Gaia. It's about 466 questions, which is related to more real life topics, questions which you and I could probably answer, but it they are formulated in a way which is very challenging for AIs to answer. And it turns out that this new deep research beats all other AIs on both of these benchmarks by a long shot. Now, what that means is that this AI is not only within specific domains a lot more intelligent, but it is also a lot better at answering real life questions which could actually relate to your job and what you want to find out about the world. So I thought that we would actually try this AI out together and see what types of responses we're going to get when we ask it the same types of questions as we would regularly ask, for instance, O1 carbon dioxide footprint of AI. Question is the following. I want you to give me a short answer with graphs and illustrations in an Excel macro for the following question. How many tons of CO2 prompting AI has created in 2024? Estimate the total mitigated climate impact AI has mitigated during 2024 in tons of CO through smarter production, infrastructure, social development, development of new technology and so forth. The last question is that I wanted to create a couple of charts for us so that we can actually visually see this in like an Excel macro. And I also wanted to illustrate something about the future state of 2023, make a projection of how this is going to look like in 2023. Now, when we ask deep research this question, for example, the answer we're going to get here is that it's not going to start doing this for us. It's actually going to ask us one, two, three, four, five relevant questions before it starts actually working through this prompt. So here you can see it asks us three questions that it wants us to answer before it starts working. So uh, do you want an estimate based on global AI usage specific to certain AI models or general computation demands for AI in data centers? And then we, uh, we tell it general demands. Second question is, should I focus on specific industries where AI is uh, actively mitigated uh, or broadly? estimate and then I broadly estimate and then number three uh, should the project assume current trends yes uh, so now we answer those three questions and then it will hopefully tell us that it's going to start gathering their information for us now this is most likely going to take anywhere from 5 to 15 20 minutes for it to actually do we will have to wait a little more before we're together again. So I thought that we were gonna let it work through this and then we're actually gonna go through two more questions that I thought that we would actually ask it. And here you can see that it started to research this topic. So the second question, which I thought could actually be a bit more uh, relevant for you who are listening to this and might be working within Scandinavia or in Europe and you're 
may be terrified of tariffs coming and maybe affecting your jobs from the US. So the next question is, Trump has recently enacted 10 to 25% tariffs against Canada, Mexico, and China. I want you to make an analysis of how a 20% tariff towards Europe could affect my business, a truck manufacturer in Sweden. I want you to analyze the direct, but also the indirect consequences such a tariff could have and the most effective products and services for my market and my customers. Uh, so here, once again, it's going to ask us one, two, three, four, five relevant questions that we need to answer before it starts working for us. So I'm going to do that really quickly and we're just going to cut forward. So now I've answered the questions. It had a bunch of questions related to competitors, how much of our market is in the US and how much we source from the US. So we answered all of those questions and now it's gonna start researching. The last question really quickly, I also want to do together with you, which is related to Scandinavia. So in Scandinavia, I want to have a one page summary of how we're doing when it comes to AI. To compare the Scandinavian countries with the rest of Europe, China and the US, it comes to use using AI tools in our day-to-day -day work and how more efficient we are compared to the rest of Europe. And once again, we're going to ask the question. It's going to ask a bunch of questions back. So here, once again, it's going to ask us a couple of questions and I'm going to cut forward so that you don't have to wait through this. We will not have to wait a moment more. So now deep research has started to researching this topic as well. So now we have three different researchers doing research on three different topics and they're going to do this for a couple of minutes. So we're going to check back with them in a couple of minutes. And I am actually going to ask the same exact questions to ChatGPT01 so that you can see the actual difference in the types of answers and how it sources its material. All right, so now our deep researchers have finished their jobs and I have also prompted O1 to see the comparison between using deep research to do these kinds of more in-depth research analyses and using a regular model such as ChatGPT01. So here to your left, you can see uh, the deep research Search's result and to your right you can see O1's uh, result and just off of the bat Deep Researcher makes a lot longer answers which goes into depth regarding all of the different aspects uh, of the question. It sources 11 different sources and it took five minutes to complete this job. Here at O1 it also took some say probably 20-30 seconds to reason and then it started giving us the answer which is a lot more compact and short form. There are zero sources which are uh, in this answer, which is quite concerning. And I'm going to actually show you something that is even more concerning when it comes to the answer from O1 when it comes to Scandinavian adoption, but we'll get there in a couple of seconds. Uh, so here you can see that it is also sourcing within the text, which is really valuable for us when we're doing these types of market analyses, then we can actually just go to them straight away. And, uh, and here you can see that it goes into to all of the different aspects of how a 20% tariff could affect European companies within truck manufacturing. And I read through this, it seems like it's actually a quite a good analysis. I would maybe actually pay something if this was behind a paywall to actually get access to it. And when it comes to O1's answer, this is a lot more general. It does not go as in depth within the different topics. This is a, a give and take. It depends on what you like and what your preference is. Sometimes you actually want to have a short form answer and you want a quick answer. And then O1 is great. Even O3 would be greater. But when it comes to these types of more in-depth analyses, I think that just by seeing this, this is a lot better of an answer. So let's check out the C CO2 impact of AI. And here is actually a question that I actually have an estimate which is fairly reasonable. So the estimate that I have when it comes to the CO2 impact of just the electricity that an AI uses, Sam Altman, he said in an interview that they get around a billion prompts a day. And through looking through some articles, I found that somewhere in between two to four and a half grams of CO2 is produced per prompt. So just by doing the math, you can see that somewhere in between one and a half and two million tons of CO2 is released per year from just the electricity from prompting ChatGPT. So let's see if any one of these are getting close to that answer. 
So here you can see once again, the answer is a lot longer when it comes to using deep research compared to uh, ChatGPT-01, which is a lot shorter. Here we also asked for an Excel macro, which we can check if it's actually working or not. Let's copy the code here. Let's open a new Excel sheet uh, and see if we can actually get this Excel macro working or if we have some syntax errors. Uh, here we go. Yes, it worked. So here we can see the answer that it gave and it actually estimates, uh, let's see here, CO2 emissions versus mitigation 2024, 2027 and 23. 30. So here we can see that the Excel macro kind of failed. So it's actually interpreting the year as the CO2, uh, which AI is emitting. Here it actually estimates that the AI emissions are 300 million tons per year and the CO2, which is mitigated by AI is 100 million. And 2030, the uh, mitigated by AI is estimated to be 2 billion tons of CO2. And this is actually a number which is supported by research done by PwC, the, the research firm or the management consultant firm. They said that it was 2.4, so 2000, I mean, that's, that's fair. 300 million tons of CO2. I think that it's actually estimating the total cost of AI, not not only the electricity, so it's also taking in the NVIDIA chips, it's also taking in all the data centers and so forth. So that could actually be a fair amount, wouldn't uh, put money on it, but uh, somewhere in between there seems kind of reasonable. Now, when it comes to O1's answer, we can actually see if that Excel macro actually works or not. So here we can see the Excel macro from O1, uh, and it's actually giving us better response than the other one. And here it's actually telling us that it's 25 million tons of CO2 in emissions, but the mitigation is 80 million tons of CO2. So the answers here are very different. I mean, the, the spread between these are huge. Now that could be because of different reasons. It could be because maybe I was not clear enough in my prompt. Am I talking only about the electricity consumption or am I talking about the, the entire scope of using AI? But uh, I'd say that when I've been using deep research, it's giving me a lot more of a detailed analysis with sources when it's actually giving me numbers, which is quite useful. Now, the last one that I want to show you is the question about AI in Scandinavia, because this is actually the topic of my next video. So I don't want to show you too much of it because I'm going to have a whole video about this topic. But really quickly, we can see here that when using deep research, I read through it, it actually gives us a, a lot of correct answers, but it's also giving us some incorrect, I would say, rationale when it comes to formulating its answer. It's trying to give me kind of a positive viewpoint instead of actually giving giving me the reality of the question, because we asked about all white collar sectors, not from like a company perspective, but from a worker perspective. And the answer that it gave us was that, well, Scandinavia, they're very tech savvy. They adopt new technologies quite quickly. But then it also goes on to the actual problems in Scandinavia, which is that we are lagging in adoption. A study from PwC, uh, no, BCG, once again, on 4,000 white collar workers found that only 19% of people who do white collar work in Scandinavia use GPTs or LLMs weekly versus 61% on average in Europe. This is like the bombshell of this research and this should be kind of the focus of the narrative of the research it's giving us kind of this kind of watered out answer um but it's it's all of it's correct all of the sources are correct i checked it so so this is this is a really really good job but it's kind of have a biased viewpoint to give us a, a better response it comes to O1, it completely fails. It's telling us that Sweden and uh, Norway and Denmark, oh, they're so great. They always adapt technology quite quickly. Strong government support. This is completely wrong. I think that in Tortoise uh, study, we were actually in the bottom tier of government support when it comes to AI. We're not in the top tier. This Just the Swedish government is pretty much not doing anything right now when it comes to supporting AI. And this is supported by research. This is not just my own opinion. 
So what you can see here is kind of the, the backside of these AI models, is that the kind of narrative that we've had in the world is that Scandinavia is this, on the forefront of new technology, we're always uh, one step ahead when it comes to broadband, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, and this is kind of the data that this model has been trained on. That the Scandinavian countries are falling behind rapidly is a new development and there is not a lot of narrative about that online. So when these models have been trained on the narrative that Scandinavia is this kind of forefront of technology, it's still giving us that narrative, which is completely wrong today. So we need to still watch out. There are still hallucinations in these types of models, which kind of makes me sad. I thought that they would actually figure that out by now, but deep research is I mean, just wow. The answers here are incredible. I have these types of questions every single day. This is actually gonna help me a lot when it comes to figuring out questions about the world. Now, this is today only available for pro tiers, so I'm, I'm paying quite a lot of money for this license, and I know that you might not have that license, unfortunately, but they're actually working quite hard on getting this out to everyone. I read a, a tweet from Sam Altman where he said that he's going to release this for all of the different tiers, even the free tier, but in a a limited amount of prompt. So stay tuned. This is coming and it's coming very soon. And I hope that I've given you a bit of an insight of how deep research works, how you're going to be able to use it. And I hope and I pray that you as well are going to start playing with this and learning how to use it and get all of the value out of it, because <laughs> this is like the third or fourth release within just two weeks. I mean, the speed at which this is coming is completely insane. Uh, so, I mean, we need to really strap in, experiment, try them out as soon as they come, see how you can actually implement this in your daily life within your job, because you'll be able to get so much value from this, especially if your boss doesn't know that this actually exists, because then you can pretty much do the work of four of you and get quite a handsome pay raise. So that's all from this video. Thank you so much for coming along. And as I said, I'm going to have a video about Scandinavia and AI coming out within just a couple of days, so stay tuned. If you wanna figure out something more about the European Union and how the EU is doing when it comes to AI, I have another video about that, so check that out. And please, 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 this is a new channel and we really, really, really need your support. So so if you could subscribe or like this video, I would forever be thankful. So thank you so much, and I hope to see you in the next one.